Okay, I had the next five sessions all planned out. Every town they could visit, tons of shops for interaction, NPC names, backstory, and personalities figured out. I've got maps, I've got story, I've got quests. I Wait. Aw, oh, no. I don't know what kind of crops they're growing and how that affects the economy. If this sounds like you, don't worry. I was this way too. Here's how I got out. Okay, I know I don't usually post that often. In YouTube terms, I have no one to post this to. Shout out to my current 80 subs though, y'all are real ones. But I figured since I'm a part of the D&D community and I've mastered dungeons for about five years now, I'd throw my hat in the ring of do's and don'ts for new DMs. So, going back to the prelude, what happened and what can happen to make it better? Well, first and foremost, don't do this. Now, if you want to chronicle detailed story notes for your campaign, that's great, but do this AFTER the fact. Too many times I've been asked by friends to look over DM notes by them and it's all either pages of block text that reads like a Shakespearean play, by which I mean with elegance and grace, but also what the f*** <coughs> am I looking at? Or expansive, I mean exhaustive lists of items, names, locations, quests, monsters, dungeons, lores, etc, etc, etc. And yes, I too have fallen into this trap of writing far too much for my own good. But hear these words, homie. Relax. Your campaign doesn't have to be on the level of live plays you've seen, like Critical Role or Dimension 20 or Dusk or any other live play you may watch or listen to. You don't need cool terrain pieces or expansive lore or whole source books released about your setting, and your name doesn't need to be Matthew Mercer. Now, are those things cool to have? Hell yeah! Yes, absolutely but they are not essential. I've DM'd for years with nothing but marker stained wet erase battle mats, a DM screen, some dice, and my tablet where I display my session notes. For my players, I encourage them to bring their own miniatures, but I don't expect custom 3D printed and professionally painted miniatures straight out of Goober Town Hobbies. If that's their jam, dope. But if they wanna use dice or bottle caps or even Lego minifigs, that's dope too. But what's the point of all of this? Why am I making this video? What's the thesis statement here? Well, the point is that DMing is the easiest job ever. You're just overthinking. And I'll show you how. Hey everybody, quick word from our sponsor. Shut your goofy ass up, we don't have one yet. But maybe Pepsi could? Going back to the point about friends wanting to start DMing for D&D, they either come from one of two perspectives. The two I talked about earlier are one fork in the road that I called Paralysis Path. These DMs are more equivalent to writers and game developers and dungeon masters, taking inspiration from settings like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or Game of Thrones with long, complex histories full of political intrigue, hardcore world building, heavily detailed maps, expansive stories, or video games like Borderlands, Fable, Dragon Age, and so on. These people go so deep into the world that they develop this fear that their players will have their characters go off script for any given moment writing notes like when the party does X, implying the party's options are binary, when in fact players are generally really smart and creative with problem solving. <laughs> a quick example, I was playing in a Star Wars TTRPG game and I had found a bottle of basically space windex. I like collecting random shit in campaigns, so I kept it. Later, we had gotten into combat with some really tough enemies and I remembered I had a spray bottle. I also had a stealth cloak that gave me a stupid high bonus for stealth checks. Using the two of these, I snuck up on the enemy and sprayed them right in their visor, temporarily blinding them. I know it sounds rub and tuggy to talk about my own stories, but even the GM said it was a really creative idea. The point is, most DMs don't think on that level of detail because it's highly unlikely likely that these scenarios even happen, but you give the players an inch and they will stretch it into a mile. The point is, these writers plan out entire arcs in heavy detail down to the family lineage of the shopkeep who only oh, sells sword, discount weapons to scouring battlefields in the war to be discarded. Homie! Relax! 
To take a verse from epic rap battles of history, we don't need the backstory on every fucking tree branch. The unfortunate part of these paralysis path writers is that their campaigns will likely never see any table use as they are constantly stuck in analysis paralysis, which I understand this doesn't really quantify as the definition of analysis paralysis, but in my mind it makes sense because they're constantly analyzing minute little details about their world and because of it they will never put it on a table because it will never be good enough for them. So I call it analysis paralysis, which is also why I call the path the paralysis path. The other fork on the path doesn't really have a name, more so just a way of DMing that I don't really agree with. This method sees a potential DM either coming up with a story or main quest for a campaign or being inspired by other DM's ideas or even quests from pop culture. They take this idea and with no experience whatsoever, jump feet first into the fire. Now, these campaigns either go one of two ways. They are either crash and burn, commonly referred to as impromptu one-shots, by me at least, or they go on for years and are some of the best TTRPGing ever, and everyone walks away with a more developed personality, having answered some incredible moral quandaries and completed Herculean tasks, all contained within the complex organism that is the human imagination. The latter was is actually how Critical Role started. A one-off session run for Liam O'Brien's birthday that turned into Vox Machina, Mighty Nine, and now Bell's Hells. These two forks, as all do, begin on the same path, the path of inspiration. This path is full of wonderful ideas and a state of mind that flows with creativity. That sounds exciting in the moment, but only exists in your head. People who have never DM'd before may be inclined to research everything they can about mastering the dungeon. They may watch all of running the game before even writing their main story points. Or they figure all the DM does is sit behind some kind of screen, roll some dice, does a couple of funny voices, and off they go. Neither one is necessarily wrong, but separately, they both fail. But why? Why? DMing is an art form. It is the art of creating a world full of intrigue and mystery and most importantly, fun. That last word being the most important one to remember. Fun. Is your campaign fun? Now I'm not going to tell you your campaign isn't fun based off of some arbitrary checkbox method to quantify fun because newsflash, those checkboxes don't exist. Like there's basic common decency checkboxes which, you know, can generate some level of fun in that you're not being a f***ing asshole. But there is no you did XYZ in the campaign therefore it's fun because there isn't. They, 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 that, that's just, just, just damn. <laughs> God damn. Don't put that in the video, please. <laughs> Having fun in D&D differs between every group of people and even between every individual player. Some might be more lore intensive and want to learn more about the realms they're exploring while they search for the adjective noun of event or person name. While some players just want to hit hard and roll a bunch of dice because big number go the only way you can tell if your campaign is fun in any way is by the attitudes of your players. Are they laughing and cracking jokes during the session? Are they interested in goings on of others in the world? Are they talking to each other in character? Willingly. And overall, are they showing up? If players aren't having fun, they'll let you know either subtly by saying I can't make it because of XYZ, which isn't a problem for emergencies, but repeat absences, especially back to back, it makes a pattern. Or they'll just straight up tell you, hey, I'm not having fun. And that sucks. And also, players leaving is never fun. And there's always this weird silence as they pack up their things and leave the table as everyone feels awkward and unsure of what to do. And the DM either calls it there or carries on with the session without them. Thankfully, this is a very rare event that I have had the fortunate pleasure of never enduring while I DM'd. But it does happen and it does suck. I've been at table where DM makes a, a very particular call that they are dead set on and a player full heartedly disagrees with that call and said player either left mid session or talked with the DM in private and is no longer a part of the campaign and that f <coughs> sucks especially when they were a fun player and an awesome character to play with it's really unfortunate 
It really is. But it happens. Very rarely, but it happens. And that point exactly. This is why I stress the point of making sure your players are having fun. That should be the first question you ask your players after each session. Literally just ask, was tonight's session fun? Your players will let you know what was great or what faltered. In most cases, they'll tell you it was great and that they'll see you next time. Also, just to go off on a little tangent here, one of the greatest rules that has ever come out from the community of Dungeons and Dragons is a rule called the Rule of Cool. If you haven't heard of it, Here's your introduction. The rule of cool is basically meant for superhero moments in your campaign that the rules as written would never allow. But you as a DM have explicit power to morph the reality of your world however you see fit. That being said, you can utilize the rule of cool to say, you know what? That sounds cool as hell. Let's do it. DMs will also use this rule to say things like, I'll allow it, which has one of two meanings, either I don't have the time to search up this rule, or this rule doesn't exist, so f*** <coughs> it. This is the point of DMing, telling your story in a way that's fun for everyone. But how do you tell that story? How do you leave things up to players to interpret? How do you allow options for player character interaction? The answer is so simple you won't believe me. The answer is one word, outlines. Outlines make your campaign go round, and they make your life as a DM simple and easy. Every session should be written as an outline for a chapter in a book, broad strokes with minor details added in where necessary, not where you want them to be, WHERE THEY'RE NECESSARY. Unless it's important for your story, or unless it makes the session more fun, IT'S NOT <coughs> NECESSARY. Details like the shopkeep for a discount weapon shop couldn't setting up because their father couldn't afford scout. blah 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 blah. Sounds like a cool idea until you realize your players don't give a shit. <coughs> they care about cheap weapons with average reliability that probably aren't cursed. Probably. Now that shopkeeper could have a fun quest behind them for tracking down this really great item that would boost customers to their shop. But is this shop, its keeper, or the item in question interesting to your player's characters? Are they going to care about a sword with a glowing eyeball and toothy fanged blade cursed by some shark god to make its bearer never leave the sea Davy Jones style? I mean, yeah, it sounds pretty dope to me. And your players might think the same thing. And that's exactly the point. The campaign should be written around both giving your players goals for their characters to complete and letting them develop their own issues to solve within the world, usually coming from their backstory. While following their characters is a helpful observer, not railroading your players' characters into doing something they don't want to do because you thought it sounded cool, or rushing them through a narrative because you don't like it. Time and time again, I have seen people do the latter, and I will admit, I'm guilty of doing it myself. But if you want this to be a memorable campaign, or even one that your players consistently show up to play in, you need to listen to your players and plan your sessions accordingly. And outlines are great for this. Listen to what your players want to do. If they want to interact with Danny the Discount Dealer and see about that Shark God Sword, let them. You wrote it in. Let them follow the rabbit hole even if it doesn't connect to the main story. Eventually though, after obtaining the boon of the Shark God and obtaining Calypso's Cutlass, your players will need something else to do. Your ability to jump between main quest stuff and this Call of Calypso's Cutlass quest will be made easier with outlines. Just put a bookmark in the story where your players left it and flip back to it whenever they finish their shenanigans. If these shenanigans weren't part of the main story to begin with, maybe they needed Calypso's Cutlass to slay or command some great evil sea serpent with the powers of a blue dragon causing thunderstorms in the sea, interrupting trade or otherwise harming innocent people, and this blade is the only thing it will bow to as it's imbued with the will of the god of the sea. God damn it! Now I wanna play that shit. Your outline should be your session bible. It's your way of keeping track of what should be happening in the session or what the players can do in the session while leaving enough ambiguity to allow the players to freely explore their surroundings while keeping them contained. Kind of like putting an invisible barrier around a large field for your dog, but putting a shock collar on them to train them to stay in the area. Also, Leaving time in your outline for players to do their own shenanigans is a must as well, as players will likely craft backstories for their characters. These backstories will vary from had parents, they died, took up jobs, here I am, to player crafted tales about love, loss, trials, and triumph with decades of history. And you have to remind them they're starting at level one 
and are barely stronger than any given city guard. I had to do this twice. Usually players will work with DMs to weave backstories into the world for immersion, which to me is a dirty word, but for most people it's the ultimate goal, and we'll get into that later. Character backstories are part of the reason these people even show up to begin with, and to disregard them or say they don't work without offering a compromise is not only a blatant disregard of your player's time and effort, it's also a dick move and just rude in general. If the backstory of a character legitimately conflicts with your story or world, then talk to the player player about it and find a middle ground where everyone is happy. Key word there, everyone is happy. But if they can't tolerate not being God Emperor, Mankind, Commander in Chief for all humanity, then I don't know, they can go play Warhammer or something. On the other hand, if you're being overly protective of your ideas and are unwilling to compromise on little things like Danny the Discount Dealer, then stop what you're doing and recite this mantra. It's not that serious, it's just a game. It's meant to be fun, and I'm making it lame. Say that about three times in the mirror, and bet it doesn't change your mood. And if it doesn't, then you're writing a book, not a campaign. Basically, make your campaign outlines with branching narratives. No, 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 not this kind. No, no, this kind. Where the main narrative pauses to allow for these side narratives to be completed. Make these side narratives plug and play, too. If you had a plan for Danny to be in a specific city, but your players don't want to go there, he shows up in the next city they visit. It's that simple. Now, if your narrative has a time limit on it, like the evil wizard promises the destruction of your hometown in five days unless you grant them something of value, then try to keep other stuff off the table and have your party focus on the wizard. Or if they don't care about the town or the wizard, then whatever. Town gets destroyed, wizard gets something, your players don't know what, but the wizard and the town are both gone now. Now let's get to that pesky word. Immersion. I immersion. I immersion. I immersion. You immerse yourself in a shower, bro. Immersion is a slippery slope, and far more intelligent people than myself have tackled the issue of immersion, such as Barry Kramer, an old editor for Game Grums who streams on his own Twitch and uploads some really neat stuff. I'd recommend you watch, you know, his entire channel, cause all of his content is genuinely interesting, but more so, I recommend you watch his video on immersion to get a good sense of immersion and all it encompasses, but TLDW, even though you should watch it, immersion is bullshit. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Immersion is an amazing tool for ensuring you hook your players into the world and get them interested in forces beyond themselves such as, oh, I don't know, your big bad evil guy, the main problems in your world, the larger or largest threats that will destroy the city, country, continent, world, galaxy, universe, etc. But what most people misinterpret about immersion is that it's the only way to keep players interested and future-proof their schedule so they always show up. And as I said, this is bullshit. <laughs> Players show up because they want to see their character do cool shit. <laughs> it's the reason we play video games like Fallout, Skyrim, God of War, and many other RPGs. We exist through these characters in a different world where the laws of our world don't translate and we can do cool shit <laughs> like nuke towns or slay gods or collect 500 wheels of cheese. Why? What the fu- Because it's cool as f <laughs> It's great to sit down and pretend to be someone else. Whether it's a god of war, a captain of a space crew, a man with the soul of a dragon, or even a mailman left for dead in the Mojave Desert. We play these games and pretend to be these people for hours on end because it's- Say it with me. FUN! Now most people will likely have a different perception of what the fun is that they gain from these experiences. As I stated earlier, some people like intense lore, some like big numbers when they hit stuff, and some just want to be somewhere else that isn't here. And some just want to watch the world burn. But in the end, fun is fun, and your players will tell you if they're having fun. And that's not only the most important thing you can do as a DM, but also the most satisfying thing ever. Running a session with somewhat of a plan, maybe a single notepad that just says, Slay Dragon, Collect Gold, Sexy Goblin, wait, what? I I didn't write this in the script. Who put this in the script? Doesn't what matter. Did your players have fun? Did you have fun? If the answer to both is yes, then I don't know what the f*** <coughs> you're doing here. Keep doing what you're doing because clearly it's working. If the answer is no to any or all of these, find what makes it not fun for who and adjust it to make it fun. If you can't make it fun, don't do it. You don't have to do something in Dungeons and Dragons if it's not fun. It's a f*** <coughs> game. 
If it's not fun, then you don't play the game. You find something else to play that is fun and play that. <sighs> also, to address a related issue, most DMs are scared to admit that they usually get to a point, if not starting out with that point, of having nothing written down and just saying go. No plan, no outline, just a group of friends sat at a table playing D&D. Now, if this is fun, then do it. Improv is great, and it's a wonderful way to exercise the creative parts of your brain. But understand, this won't work forever, especially if you're trying to run anything resembling a serious or interconnected campaign. Eventually, you're gonna have to write something down. So, here's what I recommend. I said before that outlines would become your new session bible. And I was serious then, and I'm serious now. Outlining with broad strokes for major plot points and minor details for important descriptions and story beats is the easiest way to session prep. I will say, don't get ahead of yourself. I would recommend having a finished outline for your intro and a finished outline for your eventual end. But don't marry yourself to this end unless you plan this end to come soon and fast. Between start and end, some wacky shit can happen because of player interaction which can shift the whole narrative of the campaign on a dime. A great example of this comes from Brennan Lee Mulligan when he's describing a wedding gone awry. Take a listen. It's an older dwarven guild elder uh, marrying this younger dwarven like princess. Mm -hmm. And the princess is like not super hyped about the wedding. But then the wedding is attacked by the evil wizard Bombeldo or whatever uh. the guy's <laughs> name is i narrate someone rolls some like you know insight check or whatever whatever it was in second edition back mm -hmm. then i go yeah she's not super hyped about the wedding guess what my pcs do they <laughs> clock the groom over the back of the head <laughs> kidnap the princess and they're like we're not gonna watch you get married to this person you don't like wow and so i go uh are you sure you don't want to <laughs> are you sure you don't want to stay and they go no we're kidnapping the bride and we're getting her the <laughs> out of here and so the adventure becomes the the dwarven militia chasing down <laughs> these kidnappers. And of course I'm like, they're immediately having the most fun yeah. in the world. They've so in other words, weeks and weeks and weeks of my life and 95% of this book are gone in the wow. first. <laughs> Bombeldo showed up to literally an empty. He's like, I have come to kidnap a princess. <laughs> Guess what dog, she's gone. <laughs> In one session, the party took Brennan's entire planned campaign and shifted that narrative entirely. This is why I say and stress, don't marry yourself to your ending. Have the idea in mind, hell, even write it down somewhere, but don't make it the only ending. Your campaign should flow like water, having a solid beginning, climatic middle, and a satisfying ending that flows like this. If you marry yourself to your ending, you'll flow like a bumpy river with a surprise waterfall. Don't let yourself create this surprise waterfall. It ruins everything. Remember, it's meant to be fun for everyone, not just your players, and especially not just you, everyone. So, how do you do the mystical outline that I've been dancing around the whole dang video? Well, here you go. Literally bullet points mixed with scripted events and descriptions. Start out with an introduction to the local area. Give your players a sense of surroundings with things like weather, smells, sounds, and sights, and show them to the tavern. Yes the tavern. Listen, cliche doesn't mean bad, it just means cliche. People find comfort and familiarity, and starting the campaign in a tavern is a time-tested method that's sure to put your player characters in the story. Everyone goes to taverns, why not them? Have them roleplay how they enter the tavern. Do they enter with flair or mystique, or do they just walk in not really caring how anyone looks at them? I could go on about tavern entrances, but that'll have to be another video. I don't know, throw me some suggestions in the comments. <laughs> FOUND! The point is to establish your campaign in the tones early on so your players know how to act in the world. Not only this, but have your notepad at the ready to jot down anything your PCs say that could lead to interesting things later down the line. Organizations, former allies, sworn enemies, etc. Most importantly, put them in your outlines. So many people get this wrong about not integrating the characters into the world, both players and DMs, but it's the simplest thing you can do, and it's the whole 
<laughs> reason they're even there to begin with. They want to do cool sh <laughs> because it's fun. Your players will write their own stories in your world, and that's good. You want them to do this because it shows willingness to invest in your world and include themselves in its lore because that's cool. <sighs> How awesome does it sound to play a campaign to completion and go round two in the same world with the same players playing completely different characters and have those characters hear about the dope ass shit <coughs> the previous characters turned legends did in the world from the perspectives of NPCs and historians within the world. If that doesn't excite your DM bones and make you want to write outlines for your sessions so you can play D&D with your buddies, then I don't know why the flump and f <coughs> you're here. One final point on this note. If your players write the stories, that's less prep you have to do. So, to wrap up this video, it's pretty simple. Just make outlines. Make a detailed beginning outline, a detailed ending outline, or don't make an ending outline, just leave it open-ended, and just have one in mind, and let the middle fall into place. Have an idea for an overall story, but keep it gray rather than black and white, because as I stated earlier, player's favorite thing to do is f with shit until it breaks and suddenly you have 20 foot tall chickens running around your world because of some bullshit the sorcerer pulled with their wild magic. I also recommend having a detailed word document detailing the nitty gritty of the story so far but only the story so far. This document should detail the trials and tribulations of the player characters in the world and the great and stupid things they've done to change the world around them. Keep this document separate from your outline and only craft the middle once the current session is done. This is a no touching game. That way you can approach the session prepping with a fresh mind of what's going on. I've been doing this for a while now and I swear by it as the definitive way to session prep. Literally when the party is packing up, ask them to clarify what they want to do next session and prep that with an outline. As the week passes, open it up and insert cool shit as you would see fit, but never outline beyond the next session unless it's your grey overarching story. Also bring snacks, especially if you plan on killing characters. No player is sad when you give them chocolate chip cookies. Okay, that's, that's my hat. I'm, I'm gonna take my hat back now and put it on. I, I, I gotta keep my head my head protected. Gotta keep the sun out of my eyes. Okay, bye.